Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. So, I'm going to start working up some loads uh, for the uh, 5090, or Sharps version. And, uh, but I got, I want to address something a little bit. Um, I had a question uh, on the comments, and you, you guys, if you look through the comments, you probably saw it. And a fellow was asking, <clears throat> how come 90 grains of Trip 7 Triple seven, that's a, one of the black powder substitute uh, powders. Why that 90 grains of it won't fit into his 4590 case. And he used the drop tube like we have here. <clears throat> You've seen me use it. Um, first off, I have no idea what to do with Trip 7, okay? I bought a can of it when it first came out, or maybe even two cans of it. I tried it a little bit for cowboy shooting. I didn't like it one bit. Um, it, it makes a white residue, which, uh, I really didn't care for that in my guns. I cleaned up. Okay. I mean, it, it performed as, as they said, but those two cans are still sitting on my shelf full. Okay. <laughs> Never used it. That aside. Okay. I had known nothing about trip seven. Don't use any of my information with trip seven. Cause it's, it is a little hotter. It's a little different. I don't think it's dangerously hotter or it develops that much pressure, but don't use it. Don't use it with anything I've talked about. Now getting back to stuff fitting in a case. Okay. This is a 5090 case. Um, now this one's a little different because it was also made, uh, it's the same case you use to load a 5110 because they had the lever guns, um, that they called express express rounds. Um, what I think is the difference or what I've seen is the difference is if you have, and I've seen it in a 4590, which I don't have a piece of that brass here, but let's pretend this is 4590 brass. Okay. In my lever gun, the twist is like 18 twist. Okay. It will stabilize that short, faster bullet better than the 24 twist that I have in my sharps barrel. Okay. So shooting express rounds through this sharp barrel at high velocities, they'll come out. They're fine. They're safe. They, they're not accurate. They don't shoot a, they don't shoot a group. They shoot a pattern. So no matter which way you go, if you have a 4590 brass, Back in the day when they had balloon head cartridges, you might get 90 grains of powder in there and still be able to compress it. Okay. But our cartridges today are not, they hold less powder. So even though you have a 4590, that doesn't mean you can stuff 90 grains in it, smash a bullet down on it. And it's good. That isn't the way it works. Okay. This is why I don't like giving out loads to people because I don't know what kind of brass you have. And even today's brass has little differences. Okay, in size and thickness and such. So if you have any black powder cartridge and you're loading with black powder, don't pay attention at all to the 90 or the 70 or whatever the powder thing is. Don't pay attention to it. Here's what you pay attention to. Okay, so you're going to develop a black powder load for a 4590. Okay, for instance, what, and then it is different which bullet you use. Okay, now my 4590, most of the time, I shoot this um, 425 grain bullet. It also has a gas check on it, but that's not important. Okay, when I load 4590 with black powder, okay, I want to get the amount of powder in there that will fill it up to wherever this, I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing. You see where the bottom of the bullet is on the brass? Okay. You measure. So you measure how deep that's going to be with your caliper. Okay. So now you want to fill that up to where this little pin touches that powder. Okay. 
that whatever that grain is, then you can write it down so you can remember it. But whatever that grain is, um, then you make you put just a little bit more in there so that when you press the bullet into position and 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 uh, grip it, and you put that in position, it compresses the powder about a sixteenth of an inch ish somewhere as long as there's some compression. So when you put that bullet down, okay, your powder is just above that line. Now I'm not going to tell you how to figure that out. You just it's just a matter of playing with a piece of brass, a little bit of powder, and a bullet. Now if you're going to use a bullet in your 4590, which I do sometimes, and it's one of these bullets, okay, you can see how much bigger it is. Oops, and it looks good on the ground too. So it's going to go down just a little bit further, but it's the same process. Measure it, and you pour some powder in. You can mark it. You can even mark the outside. Pour your black powder in until it's there, and pour it through your this here, so it kind of settles the powder in there right pour it through your drop tube okay and then put just enough powder in there more okay so that when you compress this in when you, when you seat that bullet compresses that powder now for 4590 that might be 70 grains it might be 69 grains it might be 72 grains. i don't know you have to do that for your brass okay then what i do is I'll dump that load into my scale, okay? And then I actually measure my black powder with a scale, dump it through the tube, okay? And press your bullet, and then you'll get about the same amount in there every time. But just because it says 4590 doesn't mean 90 grains will fit in there. Matter of fact, I would say with all the modern brass, none of them would be would fit to what the powder was on the on the um name of the, of the of the round 4590 usually the second number is the amount of powder 45 110 45 9 those those numbers don't work with today's brass okay so i hope that answered your question um i've used pyrodex quite a bit but right now to use a substitute <laughs> you got to clean them all they're all just as filthy the Pyrodex didn't gum up when I was shooting Cowboy Black Powder Pistol. The Pyrodex didn't gum up my revolver as fast, but it still did. Eventually, during halfway through a match, yeah, clean them, you know, or kind of lube them up a little. So I just stay with Black Powder, and, and that's all. Uh, other than stuff like smokeless powders for some of these cartridges, because I like to experiment with them, so I have different options. So... Grab a cup of coffee. I hope that answered that fellow's question, and I hope it answered any of yours. Grab a cup of coffee, and I'm going to try uh, working on this uh, 5744 uh, load for the Sharps rifle. Okay, while you was getting your coffee, I, I loaded up three rounds of this 5090, which is for the Sharps rifle. Um, I figured I've got a, this load that I've got here is running 1400 feet a second with this 5744. This one likes 1325 for accuracy with this 515 grain lead cast bullet. And that's what it kind of likes uh, for accuracy. Now, <clears throat> you can get them going a lot faster than that safely, but again, it shoots a pattern, not a group. So I want to try this at this 1400 because I like everything about this 5744 load. So we're going to go out and take these three, and if it's not snowing, the weather's been horrible last week, and it's supposed to be for another week. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run out and uh, and uh, try a couple of shots and um, and see it, it like 30 yards and see what kind of see what kind of group I can get out of it if I can even get a group. And we'll go from there. So now another thing that I want to do is I, I've got a lot of pictures of wildlife and or little bits of video. And so uh, what I'm going to do is kind of we, we take a commercial break and 
uh, some of the stuff that I've picked up over the years, I, I was going to kind of stick in for a little break in the action. Um, if I remember correctly, one, one of the ones I got is some really big, big horn sheep. So the weather's not going to be the same. It's, these are going to be from different times of the year. So anyway, uh, I'll go get set up. Check this out. Anyway, what did you think? Those sheep are pretty cool, aren't they? So, uh, you can see around me what we still have for weather. It's supposed to snow all week. So, it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Anyway, so, we got a lot. <laughs> Hard to work with what we got here. This thing is froze to the ground. And the uh, just a little hard to work with so let's see what we can get done there we go now another thing to remember that the the rifles that I'm using are rifles that I built they are modern they're, they're replicas but they're modern actions modern steel the barrels are made out of modern steel, okay? Don't do any of this with your antiques. Um, your antique guns or your uh, before uh, smokeless powder guns. Don't do any of this stuff with those. Uh, stick to your manuals on those. Anyway, teaspoon. Here, over here. Come here. Here! Okay. Good All right. First shot. Uh, with the snow in the background, one good thing is I can uh, I can see the hole really well, and it's uh, about an inch below um, dead center. Well, not even, more like a half inch below dead center. Okay, let's try number two. Well, that's right on top of it. It's made the hole bigger, is all it did. So this ain't looking too bad. Let's try one more. Uh, I'm going to take a look at it, go in the shop, talk about it. I think in the temperature here, I don't think i got to worry about the barrel heating up too much. I uh, can't remember what it's, something like, it's still in the teens, probably high teens. for much better than that. Two shots on top of each other. The other one's just off a little. They're um, they're right below the the line for the X ring. So um, now we need to see where that weighs out uh, up and down for our hundred yard. But I'd say that that load and that bullet is that's probably going to be a good setup for that gun. Anyway, it's freezing out here. Let's get back in the shop. Okay. Set that up here. I am really, I brought it in. I'm really happy with the, with the target. So, there you go. 
try to get some light behind it so you can see it. There you go. So those are three shots. Um, I was aiming right at the center, so they are a little tiny bit low. But it's an open sight gun, and I got shitty eyes, so uh, I'm kind of happy with that target. So anyway, when it comes to loading this stuff, and I'm, I'm, like I say, I, I work on this all the time. And I, I have the luxury of being able to load three rounds, which I did. And then I also can inspect my brass. <laughs> Horse treats in the pockets. Anyway, I can inspect my brass and I can see that the primers are rounded. They're not flattened. There's no splits in the case. No, if you're starting to get a lot of pressure, you'll see a little shiny spot, you know. Uh, down at the base, if it's about ready to separate. These look great. So, I work that up, okay? Get your books, and and look at your books. Use your books to establish a good starting point, and work them up. Um, they're all, di everything's different. Do you know how many times I tried different loads to get that target? So, anything I can give you isn't going to be anything. Uh, and I can't give you a starting point because I don't know what you're using. <laughs> Your brass might be a little different than my brass. You might be using old balloon brass and come up with some, I don't know. I have no idea. So, but if you use your books and you use the top knot and work your way up, you'll find exactly what you want. And uh, start with your books. They'll give you a safe starting point. You know? And, um... So I've got several books. You're not going to find it all in one book. I've got several. One of the good places to go to is the Hodgkin, um on their website. They have reloading stuff, and you can punch in information, and it'll come back with loads. And those are good starting points, and too. Try to try to get your loads uh, together. And once you get started, then you can work your way up. The forums also. Go to the Black Powder Cartridge forums. A lot of those guys will give you loads that they use, and you might be able to use it as starting load, or go a little less than what they recommend, and then work into it with your gun and your stuff. Anyway, it's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, stick with me. It, this weather, <laughs> this weather can't last like this much longer. But well, well, maybe it can. But I plan on doing a lot more shooting, so stick with me. Anyway, for now, have a great day. Bye bye.